Good like this. I need to get closer. Here. Okay. Okay. All right. The levels look good on here. Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the show. show. We are live, live from, from Hell Mary's. Mary's. Hello, Hello, everybody. everybody. Hey. 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 I got my cup from, from the river. What's up, Joe? It's a Friday, Friday night. night. I've got a nice frosty beverage here in front of me. I'm doing fantastic. I got this. Jack by Joey. So we're doing good, all right? Cheers, bro. Cheers, Friday, Cheers, Friday, 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 Friday weekend. And, uh, well, we got well, the Crosstown shootout, shootout tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, is this tomorrow? tomorrow? Yes, yes, apparently. Yes, 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 it's kind of a big, big, big deal right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. Okay. Exactly. 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 <laughs> so we are live, like I said, here at Hill Mary's. Also live on uh, ZTV's, uh, or Strawberry Slash ZTV, if I said that right, I believe. Uh, Joey, let me know if I said it wrong. But you guys can uh, check it out there. First time we're doing this, so it's a little late, but hey. Last thing you what happens. All right, so let's get into this. We got a lot of stuff on this. We got the Crosstown shootout coming up come come tomorrow. Bearcats have never won at Sensos. They won in 2000. They won in 2002. 2002. It's been a long, long time. I got a feeling this is the best shot the Bearcats have had to win this. Now, it's Crosstown shootout. I'll never say it's going to be a blowout because it never is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What's your thoughts? I mean, I mean, as a JJUC fan, UC fan, yeah, yeah, UC's a better team going in, but UC's been a better team many, many times. I don't think not come off twice when they're in the country. country. UC's been a better team, but I think they're 20, 20 30 in the country. Right, right, right. Oregon, five games in the streak, they've lost three straight games in South Center. I find it hard to believe they've lost three straight games in South Center against the team that they haven't lost to at home in 22 years. years. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's, it's going to either be a close save your win or you see is going to win by 15, 20 points. I, I, I really don't know. It's hard for that me just being hurt so many times. Right, right, right. right. And being that, and like, 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 you see the bitter offense. They can score at every level. They've got CJ Frederick, some of the coaches, how even Dan Skilling, Danny Thomas. They're some of the guys who score from the perimeter. Tizzle Dan is dead left in the mid range. Victor Lockett is one of the most. He's improved so much. Yeah, he's one of the most efficient scorers in college basketball right now. He's one of the most efficient scorers right now. In college basketball right now. With his season ending, Eligible, he has yeah, to play on the basketball game. Awesome. Is there more. a video playing? There's a lot of echo. echo. Okay, the video is causing echo on there. I'm not. Is somebody, is there audio playing? No, I'm not. No audio? Uh, I've got it. Mine's going through my headphones. Uh, 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 we're, 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 we're having echo. Uh, 
I don't, I don't have any, anything. Yeah, right yeah. So. Mine, mine's muted. You got it? All right, cool. Cool, okay. Like I said, live TV. Apologize yeah. everyone for the echo. <laughs> Apologize everybody for the echo. My, my bad. His fault. It's my fault. It was my fault. <laughs> um, Sorry. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Watkins, with Bendego being eligible, he hasn't had to be on the best. He's not a typical post. I mean, he's not as physical. He's better. I don't want to say he's a stretch big, but he's shown the ability to hit from the outside. They can score from anywhere. Right. But Xavier is, it doesn't matter who the coach is, and Sean Miller's back. Sean Miller's a hell of a coach. They come in very well prepared, and they understand the rivalry. They understand what is at stake, and it, it almost seems like UC has especially when they were in the bigger conference, when they were in the Big East and Xavier was in the A-10. Yeah. UC well, just figured, who gives a crap? I think that was more on the coach. I, maybe, I, I, maybe. I, th- I think right. we have, UC has a coach who actually cares yeah. about this rivalry yeah. now. You know, I mean, I mean, Wes has come out and said this is, in his opinion, is more intense than Duke, North Carolina. Yeah. I mean, and I've said, I, and, I, and I'm like, this should be a national thing. It's, yeah. it's two teams in the same city. You know, and they're both in big conferences now. Two streets, so I mean, they're two streets away. Victor, yeah, I mean, victory to ML King, and boom, you're from one right, to the other. Exactly. So, I mean, so th- th- so I think that's, honestly, my opinion, has been one of the problems of why UC hasn't won, because they haven't taken it as seriously as Xavier has. Yeah. As far as the team goes and the yeah. coaches. It, it, it kind of goes back, what was Mar- what was the issue with Marvin Lewis in big games? He never treated it like it was, like, if it was a primetime right. game or a playoff game. Right. He right. never, he kept trying to go on, this is just another game. Right. That didn't work. You want your players... Hype. You Dusty want your Baker's players are the same thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's you want your players excited. With Wes Miller coming in, again, he was a North Carolina player and a coach. Mm-hmm. So he understands rivalry games. He understands rivalries that dig down eat deep into your blood that are like this intense. So it's I mean, UC was the far interior team, inferior interior. Inferior easy, team easy last for year. You exactly. Say. Same thing. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, Xavier was the better team last year, and UC battled him to the, well, to so, the buzzer. So to that point. So I, I think West Miller gets it, and, mm-hmm. and UC is going to take it more serious. That doesn't mean anything in the final score, but it's, it's not going to be a matter of UC being like, it doesn't matter. We've got conference play. Like, this is a nice game to win, but right. we've got bigger fish to fry. So, so to that point, it's kind of flipped this year because UC should be the superior team. Right. Should be. Right. But that doesn't. But I mean, you remember the Kenny Martin years? We we were undefeated or undefeated number one in the country, right. and we lost to Xavier. Yeah, you know, Dri- dribbled mean, the ball off. Was that Michael Horton <laughs> dribbled the ball off his foot? I think and Lenny Brown uh, banked in a uh, shot. I uh, might have been. I, I, do you? The, the, there were a couple. You're talking like 20 years ago. It was a while ago. I don't, it was over I don't 20 years ago. It's, it was a long <laughs> it was time. It was a ago. while ago. But yeah, I mean that that's the thing. So that's why I always say it doesn't matter who is the favorite. It doesn't matter who. All right, well they should win. This is the crosstown shootout, dude. Right. Anything can happen. And, right. and I'm like so sick and tired of people going, well, some people have, 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 have still think it should be at a neutral site. I'm like, why? I I'm went like, to one of the games when it was boring. At, yeah, when it was it's at. It's insane. U.S. Bank, wanna, now Heritage Bank. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It, it, it was, was, it was uh, antiseptic. Yeah. I like being in someone else's gym. Even even though UC hasn't won in Norwood. I'm going to call it Norwood. They, it's, it, it's Norwood. <laughs> um, in 22 years. Right. Like, that's a tough place to play. Yeah. And I like that. Like, I, I, some of these, I mean, home field, home court, whatever, that advantage, being in front of your team, that's awesome. And you do it every other year. So it's not as if there's anything gained by it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so, I mean, mm-hmm. UC has the same advantage every other year. It's, I, I don't ever want to see this game being at a neutral site. No, ever. I, I, I wish there's a Big East, Big 12 showcase, whatever, you know, they have. I, I don't understand why, like, yeah, this is a big enough standalone game, but this would showcase it bigger and bring UC Xavier to a bigger national stage. Like, it, it has been off and on when both teams are, you know, top 15, top 20 teams, but this deserves, like, this needs a bigger, even if both teams are down, this needs the spotlight. I was thinking that same thing while wa- watching the Big 12 Big East Challenge yeah. or whatever they, whatever they call it. I'm yeah. like, why isn't UC Xavier in this? I mean, I mean, yeah. back in the day, I remember p- being played in January and February. Yeah, and you you play right in the middle of conference play, which yeah. was hard, right? Because you're so I understand why they moved it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with them playing the pre conference play. Pre-game. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But but I, but I do agree. I think that'd be perfect because they would get the ESPN boost. You know, right. the big Big Twelve, Big East challenge, all that stuff going Absolutely. on. That that would be perfect, I think. And I, first time I, I saw that this year, you know, because I didn't really pay attention because UC's in the Big Twelve now. Now I pay attention. I'm like. You see Xavier. That should be right there in the in the, in that. I've thought about it, or maybe the city of Cincinnati or the region doing some kind of showcase. We have four Division One teams 
plus the two teams in Dayton mm-hmm. doing a regional thing, having it, you know, oh, dude, I've said that school, from high like, school. Having oh. all three teams play a day long, you know, a tournament. Uh, right, right. They play. Um, right. They play Northern at noon. Uh, three o'clock. Have Dayton play Miami, and then six o'clock, seven o'clock, whatever. Have UC just a showcase mm-hmm. for the region how good basketball is in this oh, city. Yeah, I mean, this is the best city. From college basketball. Oh, absolutely. I've said, and, and it'll be awesome if they found a way to highlight the entire region instead of just this one game. But you can expand needed. that down to Kentucky, Louisville. You can do Indiana. You yeah, can do but State, I, I you think the problem all, with that is like that. then you're dealing with way too right, much. Yeah, right. those are schools but I mean, that, that, that have to buy that's in. the region we're right. in. Oh yeah, because absolutely. everybody keeps talking about you know uh, Tobacco Road and all that. So yeah. that's 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 college back basketball mega. I'm like, ah, you just come. You have little, four teams, but they're just because they're in one conference. Right. I mean, UD. Have you ever seen? Have you ever been up to UD Arena? No, but it's it, it's amazing. I've seen I it caught, and it wasn't a UD game. I went up there and caught a tournament game. Uh, my extended family, he's uh, wife's uncle is a sports writer. Um, I, I tickets to watch the first four, or not the first four. Uh, it was the Sunday games. It was uh, one verse. It ended up being like two one verse eight games, and, and and the atmosphere there, even though it was two games, not you know, it was just random like neutral site games. It's an awesome place to play a game. Right. Dayton has awesome history. I mean, they're Xavier. If they should be in the A10, they fit in the A10 with Xavier. It's a Catholic school, just like yeah. every other team except for Creighton, for crying out loud. <laughs> right. Um, that needs to be. I'm glad UC is picking back up with Dayton. I, I wish it wasn't a neutral site game. At you know, I would at rather that, be at home at home. Toilet. Yeah. yeah at yeah. that toilet bowl yeah. down on the river. Yeah. I'm not, but I'm, I'm glad they're picking that game back up. I think it's yeah. important. They're part of, I mean, Dayton's part of Cincinnati Dayton. That's just a yeah. huge-ass suburb. Cincinnati Dayton, Cincinnati Miami. Yeah. They should play each other every right. year. I yeah. mean, say what you want about Miami, but still, it's like, it's like the UC-Miami football rivalry. Right. They've talked about, you know, like some Bearcat fans, right. you know, we've, we've been kind of cocky. Like, oh, we right. it's not even really a game anymore. We beat How well. How that turn up? What this happened year? this year? Exactly. All right. Exactly. So, anyway, just to let you guys know, like I said we're live here at Hail Mary's Chiviet. Uh, we got the comments up. I know we're late. I apologize, but... If you guys have any comments or questions or anything, uh, hit me up on the uh, YouTube channel. And uh, like I said, we are giving away four Bengals tickets to the four to the Bengals Colts game, along with this uh, wonderful one. Well, this is a separate a separate one. We're gonna do the Jackpot Joey flag, but you have to be here. To win these things, so you cannot be family. You cannot be, yeah, of, yeah. of, of the of the hosts. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, yeah, family, or the co-host. Yeah, family. sorry, dear. I, we're, we can't give it away to family, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, well, that, that leads what five people. So I mean, there's not that many people here. <laughs> so you have a really good chance of winning tickets if you get here it's, to help Mary's Chivet. It's warm. It's December, but it's warm outside. Get off your asses, people. Go outside. Right, exactly. Exactly. Huh? Okay, so we do have people. Okay, so there are sign-ups. We, we have oh, more there people. are sign-ups online? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, cool, okay, cool, cool. So, so, so you sign up here and you sign up online. Yeah, the Jackpot Joey flag is definitely happening here. Um, so, yeah, we will be announcing the winner of that uh, live at the end of the show tonight. So, all right, so we talked about the Bearcats. We got the I-74 rivalry. Colts. Bengals. I mean, it, it is it's a thing. Like, I think it should be a bigger rivalry. It I, should be. I never understood why they're not in the same division. Uh, that's you read my mind. That's that, when they made the AFC North. They're, they're in the why, South, but they're more north right, than. Why they grabbed Baltimore? Yeah. And put them in instead of Indianapolis. I'll never. I'll never know. Because they didn't want to put the. That they wanted to keep the Dolphins in the East with the Jets, and tradition more traditional rivals. Yeah. So. Well, we have our traditional rivals with the Steelers and the Browns. Right, so. but I mean. Cleveland, I mean, or I mean, this closest city to closest franchise to the Bengals are the Colts, mm-hmm. hundred miles away. I right. was just in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago to uh, to watch Pacers game with, uh, with my son. This should be like, I would love for them, and it's not going to happen unless there's another big round of um, uh, expansion or anything, which I don't think is going to happen for a long time. But they need to read. They, they need to realign. The fact that the Cowboys are in the East, <laughs> like, like it's. Right. I get they don't want to like. If you're gonna keep rivalries, then don't realign. Then, then, then it's just dumb and it makes no sense. It was like the Bengals, or it's like the Reds and the, uh, and the Braves and being in the old NL West, NL West when the Cubs yeah. and the uh, in Cardinals the were in the East. Yeah, I mean, that made no sense. I get you had to, you know, Reds volunteered because they had a rivalry with uh, Brooklyn slash LA Dodgers, yeah. but 
if you're gonna realign, do it right. Like right. Do, do it what actually makes sense. Oh, should we talk about if you, we roll this into to MLB uh, realign, which I would love them to do. Oh, for sure. I, I think that'll happen. Yeah. There's gonna be a, so uh, expansion soon. My and thing, then they'll be re-realigned. Yeah, my thing is I think Cleveland and Cincinnati should be in the same division, American League, National League, whatever. Because it doesn't matter yeah. now. We got DH and everything. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care. That that because just look at the Houston. Texas rivalry because Houston was in the National League right. for years. Right. Look how big of a rivalry that is now. Right. And, and the Reds, and you, you got St. Louis and Chicago and Chicago, and Milwaukee, kind of become Reds. Really, we hate the Cardinals. Right. But I don't. It's not as big a rivalry. It's more of a rivalry, I think, for us than it is for St. Louis. Well, and, and, and St. Louis and the Cubs are rivals. Yes. Chicago and Milwaukee are rivals because they're really close together. Right. I mean, they're an hour apart. Yeah. So since that Cleveland. Right. Pittsburgh, yeah, they're their divisional rivals. We hate them in every yeah, sport. Yeah, but they suck. I mean, they, right, exactly. They're terrible. <laughs> but they've got their own in-state rival. They've mm-hmm. got the Phillies that they've been in the same league as since 18, whenever the hell, you know, whenever right. that both teams joined the uh, National Association, 1881 right. is that right, when right, it started. Right. Reds don't have a, I mean, who was their rival in the 70s and 80s? For the Reds? Right. Dodgers. Exactly. Yeah. They, they don't have a geographic yeah. rival. So, yeah, realigning so they can actually be rivals with the close, you know, with the maybe Nashville when Nashville becomes, but I mean Cleveland's still going to be more natural. Well, uh, I think I think Nashville's definitely the next one that's getting. They're, they're on, either either they or Charlotte will get a team, and then someone out west because they're going to go to thirty-two teams. It makes too much sense. Yeah, but um, so it'll be either Charlotte and Nashville, and then somebody out west, Portland and Austin. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, they're they're but, not gonna, they're not going to have two two East Coast ones. Or, yeah. Well, Midwest and East Coast, so they're not going right. to do that. It's going to be it's one here and one out there. Exactly. Put a team in Vancouver. I'd love to go to really? Vancouver. Oh, they ch- NBA tried that. It didn't work out too hot. But I just want to go to Vancouver. I love to have a <laughs> it's all about you. I, I, oh, right. All right, all right. Oh, Vancouver, like, I don't, I've never been to Vancouver, but British Columbia is a gorgeous, beautiful-ass place. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's get back to, to the original thing, the uh, Colts. Oh, yeah, we had, we had a topic. <laughs> yeah, we had a topic, yeah. <laughs> the original thing here, the uh, Colts and the Cincinnati like Bengals. Now, the thing is, this is actually for, for who's in the playoffs, Right now, the Colts are one game in front of the Bengals. Yeah. If the Bengals win, which I think they're going to, on Sunday, they are in the playoffs. Now, that's there's a whole bunch of our games got to happen. A lot of time breakers. And yeah, all, all, you know, got all our stuff. I mean, the Bengals probably got to go like 4-1 down, 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 yeah. the, down the uh, stretch to, yeah. to, to make this happen. But it starts on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. It starts on Sunday. It has to happen then. And, and if that doesn't happen, I think we're back to, oh, maybe we'll do draft picks again. Maybe we're going to draft, blah, yada, yada, yada. But... I really think the Bengals can can beat the Colts. It's funny because it opened uh, Colts opened as one point favorites, I believe. To, no, actually, I think it was like two two and a half point favorites. <laughs> Bengals are now two point favorites. Mm-hmm. I mean, the money is heavily on the Bengals. Right. Um, it's amazing how one week changes the entire scope of the conversation. The way the Bengals offense rolled out against Pittsburgh, it was when do we start doing mock drafts? You know, <laughs> is, is it you know. I don't want to do mock drafts in December. I like not having to do them until yes. after the Super Bowl. Well, so the Bengals were either playing the Super Bowl. Especially when you do Bowl. a Bengals show. You don't want to start talking about Doing a weekly show. It, it, there's too much content to fill between now <laughs> right, right. and April, for God's sakes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, the performance, like the, what they showed on offense, what they showed they can do against a good team. I mean, the Jaguars, they would have been the number one seed in the entire AFC if they would have beaten the Bengals. They're a damn good team. Like, mm-hmm. that, that's a solid defense. Bengals put up 500 yards on them. With the backup quarterback, so that's that's changed the entire conversation, and they go out and lay an egg against the Colts. Season's over. Yeah. Great, we'll go back to worrying about when we do their mock drafts. But they've kept themselves in the conversation. And people are dreaming about uh, Jake Browning doing a Nick Foles like run to the Super Bowl. I don't see it because the defense has been well, awful. I didn't see but, with Nick Foles either. Right, so. exactly. But yeah, I, I agree with you. The, 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 for me, the most disappointing yeah. part of this team this season has been the defense. Yeah, it has not been consistent at all. Yeah. We, like, We've fallen in love with trying to rip the ball out instead of tackling guys. Five yard gains are becoming twelve, and again, yeah. like that's the right name. That's who they are. I mean, that's Jermaine Pratt's thing. He's going to make a big play. He's going to punch the ball. But out. the next guy who's tackled, just somebody tackle. grabs his legs, yeah, yeah, exactly. stop him, right. so so his forward progress is stopped after a five yard, seven yard gain. So he's not carrying him for another ten. Like yards. he did in the Texan game, which he made made a what a forty yard field goal turn to a chip shot. Yeah, it was. I mean, <laughs> you, you saw a seven yard gain turned into twenty because the pile just kept moving because everyone's trying to punch the ball. It's just. Yep. Just tackle. Stop the feet. Just tackle him. Hey, like, that's, sorry you're not getting the turnover. Just <laughs> tackle the damn guy. Right. I, I still think, I mean, and I said this going into the Pittsburgh game, the Bengals' schedule going down. Yeah, they had all teams over five, like 500 and better, but they're all backup quarterbacks. Like, K. 
Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett's hurt right now, so you're not. You know, so I, I don't even know if he's going to be back by the time. I, I, the, I feel so sad for Steelers losing last night. It was, it was so hard. It, it, it was hard seeing it, them it, actually uh, have to take a step back from Kenny Pickett, <laughs> which <Tversky>. is <laughs> man um, facing the Colts. I don't. I don't know how the Colts are seven and five. Like they haven't beat. Like they beat a bunch of weak teams. Yeah. Um, so it, it's not as if they're uh, they're beating the. I mean, talent wise, the Bengals are better. Absolutely. Even, if, even if, with, you line with, up with, with Jackpot Browning as your your quarterback. Jackpot. I'm going with Jackpot Browning, baby. Hey. I like. What did I? Uh, Jake Burr, like Jake Burr so works too, Jake like Joe Burr, Burr. Like that, that works better. Uh, uh, we, Jake. We, we, God, there was. So, I, I've seen so, some other. So they, they weren't. They, I, I saw one that wasn't actually a, uh, a Burrow derivative. That was great. And I can't remember what the hell it is. Senility is a bitch, folks. It's it's bad. <laughs> Early onset, man. Um, but I I, I kind of forget. I lost my train of thought. I went off on a tangent <laughs> with, with all the nicknames, but um, it happens, right? You're like squirrel. But yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you look at the, the like the, yeah, all the lights hey, in the it's background. The lights, yeah, exactly. Um, Which actually, you know, we don't look too bad on the screen. I'm I'm actually surprised. It looks yeah. as good as we get. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm um, happy with that. But yeah, I mean, we, we go back like into the schedule. Like, yeah, they, um, Pittsburgh with uh, Kenny Pickett. Now they're without Kenny Pickett. Yep. Now they play the Colts with the backup quarterback. Gardner Minshew's a better backup oh, quarterback yeah, Gar- than most don't, teams. Don't sleep on Gardner Minshew. He, he he's, but a pretty, he's a backup quarterback. But yeah, but he's a pretty right. good backup quarterback. They play the Vikings, who's going to have a backup quarterback, Joshua Dobbs. Yeah. They're going to play the Steelers again, who's either going to have Kenny Pickett or Mitch Trubisky. Either one, not good. Only quarterback they're playing for the end of the season is. Pat Mahomes and Chiefs don't look that good. Their like, offense again, has been. I feel like, really bad again, for you. Right, like they're, they're gonna, like, like they'll. I, I'm expecting a loss. I expect, but I expect them to lose to the Jacksonville. But and then the final game of the season, they're playing the uh, Browns, and, and even they got the Browns back quarterback. Are, <laughs> right, even though the Browns are scuffling, I still kind of think they're gonna make the playoffs. And there's a good chance Bengals are playing nothing but backups. I don't even know who their backup quarterback would be at that point. Dorian Thompson Robinson or Joe, like wh- whoever's not the Joe starter, Flacco. whoever's not the starter of those <laughs> right. crap guys. Garrett isn't going to play. I mean, he's already got a banged up shoulder. If they've got like, if, if they're clinched in the playoffs, there's no chance. Or if they're, you know, it, th- there's no chance. He's so you're saying, you're saying there's a chance. The there's a chance, there's but a chance. It, you know, it, it's. I, I don't have confidence that they're going to go anywhere in the playoffs, but it's fun. Like. I, 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 I don't want them. I, I hate the whole thing of people wanting them to tank. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my biggest thing. Is yeah. like, all right, we built this. You went to Super Bowl. You went to back to back AFC championships. You can't just go all of a sudden, oh, you know what? Joe Burrow's out. We're going to tank. Like, one, NFL players don't think like that. Like, right. You know, they got contracts to play for. Yeah, they got contracts to play for. They got pride to play for. You know, and, and the thing is, is, is you, you have this, you created this winning culture here right. that you don't want to just go flush down the toilet and say, yeah, screw it, we're going to lose. Right. Those guys aren't going to do that. And like Joe Mixon said, in his press car, or in his uh, not press car, but talking to the reporters, yeah, we can do this. We're still the Bengals. Yeah, they're still we are the Bengals. They're still a good team. Yeah, despite and, and if, if Jake Browning can play play anywhere close, which by the way, if you look at his stats for the Steelers game, he wasn't that bad. Yeah. But you also have to remember that there are two his completion passes. percentage was really good in both games. But the problem is there were also he should have thrown four interceptions. Two of them were fluke tip passes that went to Jamar Chase because, but he the didn't. Ball just happens to but bounce. He didn't. <laughs> I, I know, but but that's that's because they tried to have Jake Browning run Joe Burrow's offense. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they were thinking on that. That was the dumbest thing. Well, well the, I, Joe Burrow has struggled running Joe so Burrow's I, offense. I got a question year. for you. Now, do you with 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 watching Jake Browning run the offense, and we were able to run it more. Yeah. Do you think? And I, I've compared this to to Peyton Manning and his younger uh, early in his career. He threw the ball, threw the ball, threw the ball, and he had Edwin James as his running back. If people yeah. get mad at him. Run the damn ball. Yeah. I think Joe's kind of fallen in that same uh, aspect. Maybe with him sitting and watching Jake hand the ball off and saying, all right, I don't have to take it all on myself. Moving forward, maybe Joe can get a different perspective. You know, because you're, you're tunnel vision. You're, you're in right. the trenches. You're, you're right, focused. I got to get I gotta get to the playoffs. He's now working as an assistant quarterback coach. Right. So maybe this helps him develop his game of trust. Not that he didn't trust Joe Mixon or anything, but, you know, I'm getting, especially with the contract. I got all the money. I'm Joe Burrow. You know, I got to make the plays, well, which I don't know if he's thinking that or not, but I would probably, you know, in his situation. Maybe now he can see, all right, maybe we can hand it off a little more yeah. moving forward. I don't think it's it, it's partially that. Yeah, handing the ball off. Like, I'm not a run the ball 30 times. This is a 1992. There's no, no. Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith. We're not no. pounding the ball on the line 30, no. 40 times. Um, 
I'm fine with them throwing the ball 50 times. Yeah. Hit run, but you got to run it there sometimes. But right now, you don't have Joe Burrow. And what the scheme that they ran on, sun, on Sunday, or Monday, sorry, um, a lot of that is stuff they should have integrated with Burrow. Maybe run it more. I mean, they only ran it eight times a week before, you know. Burrow, eight times. Like, yeah, Mixon ran the ball yeah, eight, eight times, times. Like, against the Steelers. And there have been games where they ha- they've run it ten times or whatever when Burrow was there. You need to run them more than that. Even if, it's, even if it isn't effective, you're only getting two yards, you know, stuff to the line. Two yards on a cloud of dust. Exactly. And it, it, it's not so much the run game that you're worried about. It's bootlegs. It's play action. Stuff that they got, Bert, they got uh, Jake Browning out of the pocket. They created some easy throws for him. I'm hoping Burrow is looking at that and thinking, you know what? It's nice to have a nice, easy rollout and just flick the ball to an open receiver as opposed to... Right. He, what he wants to do, and, and the, and the, and the Bengals, shot. exactly, and, and what the Bengals acquiesce because when you have a franchise quarterback, you tailor that offense to what mm-hmm. he does and what he does best. Right. He likes seeing the chess piece. He doesn't like a lot of motion. Right. He hates trick plays. He likes being. And he like, doesn't like being under or turn his back to the play. Right. He likes being in shotgun, having everybody set out in front of him. Mm-hmm. Like again, running simple motion is really, really like useful tool. You're going to see what the defense is in. You run somebody across the formation, you're going to see if they're man or, or if they're in, uh, uh, in in zone defense. I'm hoping that he sees this, and I'm hoping that Brown is, regardless of how the team finishes out these last handful of games, I'm hoping that Browning is successful and the, and the offense runs fluidly, that he sees how nice it is, like how much better the offense can be when you mix these things in. They ran under center for a couple weeks uh, uh, 49ers game, they ran a lot more under center play action, boots, things like that. They looked great. Mm-hmm. Like the offense moved, and then they went back to 11, form- or, uh, uh, 11 personnel, three wide outs, under center, or um, shotgun for every single thing, and offense stagnates. Mm-hmm. You can still be a team that throws the ball. You know, uh, Bengals are always going to be one of the heavier throwing balls because they got Joe Mix or uh, Joe right. Burrow. Right. But you can mix this other shit in and be a hell of a lot more effective. Right. They struggled, even with Burrow, when Burrow was healthy. Mm-hmm. Second and third quarter, they did nothing. Right. For weeks and weeks and weeks. So. It was in every other quarter offense. Exactly. <laughs> it exactly. really was. So it would be awesome if he sees how this is. Huh? And he's in on the means. He's actually going in on defensive meetings. Uh, he's in with Lou and Arumo, uh, bugging his ears. He's, so got, he can try to understand he's, he's not sitting up in a, in a suite like Kenny Pickett was. Or. Uh, uh, Deshaun Watson. I, I, I think that was more of a restraining order issue. Like Deshaun Watson wasn't near. Somebody was on the sideline that he wasn't allowed anywhere right, near. Right, 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 right. You go up there. <laughs> Is that 500? Nope. You're gonna have to go to the next suite over. You're not quite 500 feet. Sorry. There's also an elementary school close to here. You gotta go to that side. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I can't afford. I, I, I can't avoid the uh, the cheap shots when I can take them. Uh, but, when they're there, they're there. I mean, um, I'm hoping that this lets him, like, you don't want you guys to be injured, but he's injured, and he's taking, seems to be taking advantage and using and being smart about it and seeing the entirety of the game from everyone's perspective to see what, he's going to see what the defense tries to do to take his, to take him away. Mm-hmm. And that's going to help him understand what the offense should do to be more effective. Exactly. All right, I want to get this, uh, we don't have too many comments in the, in the uh, comment section, but uh, City Boy here says, big game tomorrow. Uh, let's go, Xavier. Uh, City Boy. Hey, Xavier. Xavier, Xavier, yeah. Xavier, Xavier. Xavier. Norwood Tech. Yeah, <laughs> Norwood Tech. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a. We talked about that earlier, beginning of the show. It's going to be a. It's, it's we, we can roll back to it. it's cross out shootout. It's always going to be a tight game. Bloodbath. It, bloodbath. It, it, it'll probably be a bloodbath. Yeah. So so uh, this is and the thing that sucks for me is you see I think it's going to be favored going into it. And they're the past, there now, yeah. And and in the past when we're favored we don't do so hot. No. But I still think I. I, I Full disclosure, I think the Bearcats will win, um, but I don't think it's going to be by much. Now, the funny thing is, Elliot, who's going to be on my show today, but unfortunately with the whole us getting started late, he'll be on uh, later on next week. He's got a bet with uh, Paul for uh, uh, that uh, if um, you see or whoever whoever wins, the other guy's got to buy that school's jersey and they got to wear it. Have you, had, you got any bets like that going on with anybody? I don't, and I probably really should because I mean, we've got. Uh, I Tim- think you should bet your hair. I you should grow it out or <laughs> shave it. So you get the X in the back of your. Actually, head. I should probably. Nah, I've never let it grow that long. <laughs> um, because I mean, we've got Tim Daniel, who you know he's he's our Xavier Beaver reporter. I mean, he does the uh, yep. uh, late night Reds and everything. He's a big Xavier fan. Yes, I know. He, he's told me that multiple times. On my the show. problem is, it's like betting against the house in Vegas. Like, 
I'm a confident, cocky Bearcats fan, but no, just a little bit, a little bit. Um, however, I, I know how to read a history book. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially the last couple of years for the Crosstown Shootout, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's you know. Maybe going in, I mean, UC is now favored. Maybe I should, you know, figure something out with, you know. The- I'm trying to pump the brakes, but I'm pretty ecstatic because this, this is the most confident I've been going into a, a cross town shoot in a while. But, I still, but dude, I'm still, like, in the back of my head going, we still can lose yeah. this thing. The it- last time I was, like, the, the, big, the time that I was least confident uh, was when Xavier had David West. This would have been 2000 and, I want to say 2003. Um UC steamrolled. They, they beat them. They punked yes. them by 20, top, that by 20 was awesome. points. That was the year after UC. I mean, UC was the number one seed in the tw- uh, 2002 mm-hmm. uh, NCAA tournament. Yeah, um, Steve Logan's last year. That was Steve Logan's year. senior year. And he lost to Iowa or Illinois. Yeah. Still, yeah that was, no, no, Illinois, how- Illinois was 2004. Because I, I was out in Vegas. Uh, well, who, who, did they, he lost, who did I can't this? remember. They, they lost in the second round. They beat Boston University in the 1v16. One, one they lost in the second round. We had a really good team, I thought. They so. did. That uh. was uh, d- uh, that was Donald Little hit the turnaround yeah, jumper to yeah. beat Marquette, mm-hmm. and, uh, and that wasn't even that was just a regular conference game. That was a hell of a game. Mm-hmm. Um, who did they lose to in the tournament? I, I, it, it, it was an eight nine game. I mean, the, yeah, the, the, I they lost. Little, they lost a sure lot of eight nine games, or they lost a lot of games as a two seven seed mm. under Bob Huggins. He was good for underachieving. So was Nick Cronin. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, that, that's that's what that's what everybody kept saying. Like. I can't wait to when McKernan was coach. I can't wait till we get back to the Bob Hogan years, and then McKernan will go in there and lose in the second round. I'm like, oh, there you go. There's McKernan, there. there's uh, Bob Hogan years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe next Sunday on the 17th, we're doing on Late Night Reds a uh, Christmas song draft, like a fantasy Am draft. Am I ever going to get invited on Late Night Reds? I'm just curious. I got to talk to Tim. You're asking this. the wrong guy. I'll, T- I'll, Tim, I'll talk what, to him about that. Where's my invite? What, what the heck? Um, so, so we're going to have a bunch of guys. Uh, we're going to have at least four, maybe five guys do a fantasy draft, Christmas song draft. Maybe. And, and I'll talk to him when we get out of here. I'll send him a text. If Xavier wins, I'll have to wear some Xavier sweatshirt or something for I him. I got to do something. If UC wins, I'll give him a UC t-shirt or, yeah. uh, or sweatshirt or something yeah, to wear. Think, so maybe I, that, that, that's a good idea. I I, I, you're, I welcome. you're welcome. See, that's I'll I'm, I'm, I'm here for you to help you with. I don't, know how much, I don't know if he'll go for that because he's pretty convinced that UC's going to win because, I mean, he's covering every Xavier game. And they've – Quincy Oliveri is a good player. And seeing how – and I can't remember the name of the cat that um, UC played – God, who's, who'd UC just play the other day? They, uh, they, they Florida, Florida Gulf, Gulf, Gulf Coast. Coast, yeah. Uh, they had a, they had a forward. Yeah, that he, he got scored twenty five yeah, points. He was good. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, and, I'm, like, and, I'm, like I'm like, I think I'm head going. You want to transfer to UC next year? If you got right. more, more guy, and, and he's putting <laughs> shots over Bandago, putting shots over Lakin, putting shots over Oguama. and I think uh, Quincy Oliveri is going to be able to do the same thing. He's going to put up twenty five points, have a nice game. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but that's my concern with UC Xavier. All right, so get the comments here. Yeah, Rob Duggan, yes. Uh, I think that used to be the name of it. Hoops and Vines, yeah. It's what the, it used to be. It's called Hail Mary. So I know, Rob, you're a West Side boy. You should come on up here. Um, Jared Trenopol. I don't, I don't know who that guy I don't know who that guy is. He said the Bearcats 7 0. I think I know seven. his kid. He's kind of a jackass. I heard, I heard his kid's pretty cool. Uh, we must be the thing in a totally different people. Nah. Nah. Well, we got 7 0 and playing well. Good chance for a Bearcat win. City boy, yeah. We are four and five, and our big guys are down, but we're going to fight all the way until the end. Absolutely. And, yeah. and that's straight Mark Xavier. Like, you look at how they, they played Houston. Houston is one of the top two or three teams in the country. They battled him until it was a six point loss, I think. They mm-hmm. battled him to, uh, to the closing whistle. Um, Xavier is going to come to play. They're oh, going yeah, to punch Houston in the mouth. I am not. Unless it's Yancey yes. Gates, then he's going to punch. Yeah. Ke- then he's going to punch um, <laughs> Kenny Freeze See, in the mouth. That's one thing. I, I, I wish people would forget about the fight. We played. This is the ninety-first uh, meeting of this. Yeah. We had one fight. Right. That I remember anyway, and everybody keeps bringing that up. Like, okay, it, it was. And it was almost ten years ago now. And it was longer than ten years ago. Um, God, I'm old. <laughs> what are you agreeing <laughs> about? What? What? I'm, you're only a couple years older than me, so if you're yeah. old, I'm and you don't old-ish. Have, you don't have a hair. So exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> I chose most most of it. 90% of this it I chose. My, this is my choice. <laughs> Ask my wife. 90% of it is chosen. 10% of it is uh, genetics. Um, Rob wants to know how long we're going. I don't even know because we started late. What time did we even start? Does anybody know what time we started? 610. So when when we're done talking. Yeah. 710. We decide early. when we are done. Yeah, damn it. Right now. If we have something to talk about, you're yeah, gonna listen yeah. to every goddamn well, wait, yeah. what, <laughs> what, what, what was Joey that? Uh, wedding, wedding singer? Yes. You're gonna listen to every damn <laughs> word. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, I love the song uh, on uh, Wedding Singer. Um 
It's been a the long time. I, oh my god, I can't. Please sing it for us. Take yes, the, you, I, you have a microphone. I'm you have trying to, and I can't even remember the name of the song now. <laughs> like I said, we we have, we have complete control because Joey Carson I even run the camera. He just there's, it's just running by itself. So. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, we, like if we decided yeah. to end now, he's like we're yeah. screwed. He's, 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 over, he's oh, over here okay. walking and, and <laughs> talking, so you know, whatever. But yeah, come on up, man. We'll be here for a little while. Well, I mean, regardless, I'm not. I'm I'm on my second double. Woodford and, yeah, he and might, I, so I, I'm not we might need to take bets see how long him takes him to, uh, before Joe falls off the stool well th- there's a good chance we're just going to be Ubering back to the east side <laughs> my wife's had a yes. couple so it's you yeah, know, so. No, see that, that's the thing I'm glad you you were able to, to navigate your way to I got, get my, to the I west got side. my passport yeah. so I had to make sure that who, everything who, was up who to date who gave you your passport to come to the west side I, I'm curious about that I bribed some people see us on the east side we're more austere we have money we know how to grease the wheels of justice is that what it is oh okay <laughs> alright because we we're, we're pretty particular about who we let on the west side here <laughs> my wife worked over on the west side in college hill and den for a long time i've worked over here a bunch i she's not even paying attention she doesn't pay attention like when i'm in the same when, when i'm talking to her so she's sure wife, his wife so she's sure as i'm not gonna pay attention when she's in the back <laughs> of the room just listen to me gab on she's usually in the other other side of the like the other side of the basement when i'm uh, doing my show she, so. she got here she goes i always listen to you talk sports I'm like wow that sounds just you, like you my really wife. don't like you used to tune in me out talking sports <laughs> right, exactly, exactly i need a rubber band to flick it over her way because she is completely ignoring hey there she is she's completely ignoring <laughs> Yes, you were. I've been talking about you for two minutes. <laughs> it's probably more like five. We we're, both, we're, we're both talking talking about you. All complimentary. All complimentary. I love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good way. I love you, honey. Yeah. Oh, don't kick me out. I don't want to sit on the couch. I work for her, so I have to, you know, play, you know, be nice uh-huh. and play Kate. I mean, I she can you. talk my pay. You. She can fire me. I mean, there's, you know, so. <laughs> You're saying I'm number one? You're awesome. <laughs> Brad here says the bar closes at two. You have a couple more hours. Yeah, we're not gonna be on that long. <laughs> I, it, things would get really, really that would be interesting like, by. I mean, it's almost seven. Things get really interesting by seven thirty. That would be in there. Well, I don't know what the Guinness Book of World Record is for the longest podcast at a bar is. We have to look. Somebody, 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 like, somebody look that crowd, up. Look that yeah, up. Somebody, Google somebody it look up, that up for I, me. You know, <laughs> I, I would, but well, the, the longest bar podcast well, 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 ever. We'll run as long as the camera is rolling, and even then, like we can just stare into. Someone could put just some kind of paper towel roll right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like I said, like I said, we, we were just gonna take your right side and walk around. Like we're just gonna take over the show, Joey's. <laughs> hey, there's pizza across the street. <laughs> is Whitey Cassell still down the road? Uh, it used to be down there by. Uh, by like Glenmore or not Glenmore? Glenmore's that Whitey way. Cassell, maybe I don't. Know. I have to. I have to there used to be one down that way towards. Uh, Christ, what was that? It was the intersection. It's been a while since I've been in the the, the lovely hamlet of Chevois. 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 You got to say it right. Chevois. Chevois. Like Chevois. Cr- like Target. Target. There needs to be a Target in Chevois. Yes. There's a Target in, in Western Hills. Or, yeah, but that's Western Hills. That's, that's where city, I grew that's, up. But that's city of Cincinnati. This is the city of Chevois. 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 <laughs> I can speak. I can speak Chevois. I can you, speak you, Westside. You speak Westside? I can speak Westside. I'm very, I'm very proud of you. Very proud of you. <laughs> All right, let's get into to the Reds here. <laughs> let's go off the track here. Um, the Reds made, made a couple of moves this offseason. Si- signed a right-handed bat. Now I know everybody's like, switch oh. Air. Switch there, sorry. Switch there. And everybody's like, oh, my goodness, we got another infant here. What are we going to do? Well, they're probably going to make a trade. Or right. or what I've said, which I still think they're going to make a trade, but just just say they don't. You put Marte at third, Matty Bats at shortstop, Indy at second. You got the new guy, which you got to say, say his name for me. Jamar, or uh, it depends on how, uh, Yamar, Heimar, Candelaria. It depends on how authentically yeah. Spanish you want to be. That guy the, the at first base. Candelaria. Yeah. CJ Friedel and Not John Cangelosi. Right field to Spencer, Spencer Steer. And your center fielder could be Ellie De La Cruz. Yeah. I take that all day, every day, without trading anybody. Yeah. Well, well, but yeah, I, would do what, I do want Dylan C still. I will say that. Yeah. I mean, I mean obviously, I, I highly think that there is a trade in the works. The problem is, and, and as of 6.57, I've been checking on my, you know, while we're going here, I've been checking on uh, X, Twitter, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, uh, Elon Musk's, uh, it Musk's toy to, to see if, like, Otani is signed and he's, everyone yeah, was, so everyone would was you please sign so we get the baseball offseason on the way. Everyone was tracking a flight going from Anaheim to, <laughs> uh, to uh, Pearson in uh, Toronto. Uh, it turns out it was just some Canadian businessman. He's actually at home in Anaheim. He hasn't decided well, on anything. Did, did People they, were tracking all day long. Like well, they, 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 they got the tail number. There, there, was, there was supposedly his his agent or somebody 
booked a whole uh, a restaurant or something. No, you say Kikuchi, the, the, yes. uh, the, the pitcher who's you know Japanese uh, oh, oh, pitcher for the He booked uh, the, uh, the sushi restaurant in Rogers Center, and he, he booked for a party of fifty, and like Ooh. it's going to be a signing party. Or he's oh, just, just having a dinner with friends. Or he just wants to eat sushi. Right. I mean, it's... I, I, um, yeah, I, I would... Like, if I were going to get paid five, six hundred million dollars, I'd milk it as long as I could. He's going he, he's gonna to deserve every penny that he gets. Even though he's not going to pitch this year. Right, yeah. I mean, I mean but he's going to pitch 2025. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he's worth it just in jersey sales, in gate, uh, the increase at the gate. Um, never mind, he's legitimately one of the top five hitters. Like... How, how crazy is it? He's one of the top five hitters in, in baseball and a top ten pitcher. It's ridiculous. He's Babe Ruth. No, he's better than Babe Ruth. Yeah. Like, Babe Ruth was never a pitcher and a hitter at the same time. He was a pitcher who was a decent hitter, and then he became a hitter. Yeah. This guy does it at the same time, and it's absolutely fucking crazy. Like, it blows my mind. Someone is this good. He throws 100 miles an hour. He hits the ball harder than anybody else. He's got a great eye at the plate. I mean, he's usually one of the uh, top in, uh, tops in walks. Um, I, every, all 30 teams should have been in on trying to sign this guy. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you want to call yourself a small market. So, wait, you're saying the Cincinnati Reds have a shot? They should have. Like, they're <laughs> not going to. All 30 teams should have been in on trying to sign this guy because you're going to make up whatever you pay this guy. You're going to make it up uh, uh, twofold. Yeah, at least mm-hmm. in gate, and never mind, never mind. Like one at bat, the production you're going to get from one at bat or one inning pitched in 25, and they're on. I think in four or five years, he's not going to be a pitcher anyway. This is his second Tommy John. Yeah, second. you're still going to get a shitload of value out of just his name value and jerseys and how great of a hitter he is. Right, right, right. Every team needs to be in on him. Um, that being said, everything is being held up because the bigger teams, uh, the, the the bigger teams are. In on him, which is holding up the rest of the signings. There's a couple other. Uh, um, Yamamoto, another pitcher from Japan. Um, right. I mean, a bunch of trades that are being held up. Because teams are just waiting to see who's out on him to see who the next, you know, to see who's available, like who's going to be signing. Right. And it's figure it out so that we can move on. Again, right. The Reds right. are going exactly. to be. The Reds are going to be in the trade market. The Reds need a starting pitcher. I still think they need a right-handed hitting outfielder. Um, well, there's talk with the White Sox about their pitcher and, and their outfit, right? There was, so supposedly, um, Bruce Levine, who's a reporter for Marquee Sports, who is a, uh, Marquee Sports, they have the Cubs broadcast, this Chicago uh, media. Right. Uh, they broadcast the uh, Cubs games. I don't know if they do any White Sox, but. Um, and Marquee's just, does just Cubs, but anyway. anyway guys. Yeah, right. Um, that the, uh, but leaked that the Cubs asked the Reds about um, Rhett Lauder, Chase Petty, and then they're nine and eleven prospects, which, and and I, I think it was might, might have been uh, depends on where you look, but it was someone like in the realm of like Sammy Stafaro, who was the uh, Reds' second round draft pick, high school shortstop, and um, Carlos Jorge, who's a high A second baseman. Um, I do it. Well, prospects, it, 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 prospects are prospects. They're not major leaguers. None of these Plus, guys have played a. Played a single pit, like I faced a single batter. Plus, the Reds have the number two pick. Yeah, like they, two, they, that's huge. You know how huge that is? That's huge. Yeah, they can, and, and they can. It depends on which route they go. If there's, you know, and, and I'm not even looking about, high, you know, baseball mock drafts or anything. Right. We still have a lot to go before that. But you get a college guy at the number two spot, and that's someone who can be on your roster in 2025, mm-hmm. if possible. I mean, mm-hmm. for that matter, I mean. Well, uh, Rhett, no, Lauer, Nolan. Rhett, Rhett Lauer could be on the, on the, on the team next, this year. Yeah, there, there's a good chance Rhett could Lauer be. could work his way to the majors uh, right. by the end of 2020, uh, 2024. Um, Nolan, and I, can't, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, Shan Ewell, he, uh, first round pick by the Angels in 2023, this past, in this past uh, summer, he was on their team in uh, September. Right. As a first base DH type. So, I mean, there's a guy that, like, that they could pick who's going to be high impact, but we're not even worrying about that. Like, that's all nice and good, but... It's not really uh, tangent to what you know, or not, not really important to what we're talking about. It's I'm 43. You're 43 plus whatever. It has been. I just said plus whatever. I, I'm not saying anything. I'm a young 48. Hush. Okay. I just said plus. I, I was not throwing. <laughs> um, it's been 33 years since the Reds won a title. It'll at least be yes. I was four. I years. was 15. You weren't even alive. I, I, I was 10. <laughs> I was 10. <laughs> Um, I, I remember I watched all the damn games. No, I, I remember uh, Glenn Bragg's. Say 
boom. I remember Glenn Bragg's uh, robbing a home run in the NLCS Carmelo against Carmelo. The Carmelo Martinez, yep. former Padre turned uh, pirate. Yep. Um, so don't give me that shit about not being born. <laughs> I was born. I was made in the seventies, but born in nineteen eighty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that I was made in the seventies, but born. I was made in the seventies and born in the seventies. Right. Um, but um, all the prospects and and everyone like. If the Reds do trade for a pitcher, if they trade for an outfielder, right. people are going to lose their minds because it's going to be a heavy cost. Because they're 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 not looking for a number five starting pitcher. They're not looking for a bat, they're not looking for a right. eight or nine. That's they what want we need number, number one, one, number two. Right. That's what the Reds need. Yeah, they, they need that. Yes. Like, it would be awesome if Brandon Williamson and uh, Graham Ashcraft are either in Louisville or pitching out of the bullpen. Because then those guys, when there's an injury, because they're always an injury, when there's an injury or you know. Someone is ineffective. Lodolo gets hurt. Whatever. You've got guys that have pitched before that have, you know, well, that's shown ability. About, that's another thing. Assuming about getting Nick Martinez. Yeah. Because he can do both. Yeah. He, I mean, I mean, they signed him to be a number. Like, he, what they're paying him, he's, they're paying him to be a starter. But he's also a guy that if somebody is, you know, like, they decide Mitch Strange will change it, ineffective, or someone else is, Brandon Williamson's pitching out of the pen as a long man, and he's absolutely just lighting him up. His changeup is just baffling everybody. Right. They can swap roles, and Brandon Williamson can be the number five. That's regardless having to have nothing to do with what they do at the top of the rotation. It's just more depth, so they're not having to bring up Brett Kennedy's, um, Silvino Broncos. I mean, all, think of all the terrible pitchers they brought up last year. <laughs> Alec Mills, uh, Jake Wong. And that's um, the thing, too. Is Case, it, Casey Legumina. Like, go all, all go these back guys to all this. the Reds prospects that yeah. we can't miss guys yeah and i hate to say it, jesse winker he had an all-star game but that was it he had uh, ty, ty, uh, uh, uh stevenson right. uh, 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 ty- not tyler yeah tyler ty- tyler stevenson no the catcher no or the pitcher robert, pitcher, stevenson. robert stevenson robert stevenson although, he, although he's a fantastic reliever that i love to bring bring back because he's a free agent reliever right yeah, well, yeah well he was supposed to be our our can't miss you know and he was prospect. supposed to be homer bailey but better, yeah, but yeah all these guys that were yeah. supposed to be these these big you know prospects and come in and save the, you know save the Reds yada yada yada. I'll go with the guys that are already up here. Yeah, you know I will. Tra- I, I, I Brett, Brett, Brett Lauer is one I really don't want to trade because we just got him and I really right. like him. But he's he, he was probably the second best. I mean after Paul Skeens, he was probably the second best collegiate pitcher yeah. last year. I mean he won the top top. I mean he was the seventh overall pick. But if you can turn that into a number one pitcher along with a right hitting hitting power outfielder. Yeah. Sign me up. And, yeah. and, and like we, we talked about, I think, off air, I would rather have a right-handed power-hitting outfitter that's not a platoon. Yeah, and I love Jake Fraley. Uh, the guy's gritty. So he played with a broken toe because he wanted to be there on the team. He was going to grit it out. Like, the guy's ever like, ha- has every intangible you want from a ball player. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Will Benson, that guy's got fire. I think everyone's talking about how uh, Jonathan Indy is the lead or whatever. I actually think Will Benson is the heart and soul. You look at him, his walk off against the Dodgers the week uh, the week that Ellie came up, and you see how fired up he was. How everyone, oh, dude, Ellie, was awesome. I was there last week, and you were there too at the uh, rookie the, the rookie roundtable. Yeah, mm-hmm. Ellie said the most electric moment was Will, Will Benson's Benson. walk off. Boom! Slams the bathroom, almost hit Ellie for that yeah, matter. Coming out of the started, dugout, just talking shit, and, and just like just I, I, don't, I don't even you. know. Like this is my fucking yeah. dude. Like I, I I really want a John Boy meeting. Somebody to like that. do a better like lip reading. Yeah, but. As much as I love him, give me someone who can bat against lefties and yeah. righties, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because that's more important. And, and the like, thing is, the, the Reds have been down for so long. We haven't won the World Series since 1990. Yeah, I was 15. Yeah, I'm married. I got two kids. My oldest son is, is married already. That's a long damn time. The AARP is calling. The, not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long freaking time to not win anything, and we've only been and we haven't won a playoff series. Since 95. 95. Yep. Yes. We got swept. We beat, we, we beat, the, beat Dodgers. the Dodgers and we, and we got swept by Atlanta. 1995. Yep. I was 25. Yeah. It's been a long freaking time. I, I was 15. That was so, my sophomore, sophomore year. High yeah, so I'm like, damn the, the, the prospects. Yeah. Go get people who I would take. Well, what was your saying? I, it, Productivity it, over projection. Yes. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Because we know. All right. We know Ellie's good. We know. Uh, well, well, 
Well, we know they did we, what they we, did this year. Ellie's ceiling, like, right. there's nobody, nobody in the history of baseball has reached where Ellie's ceiling is. Right. But that's, still, that's still projection. But these guys but. have done it in the majors already. Right. Maybe they have a sophomore slump. Maybe they don't live up to But they, we've already seen what they can do. We don't right. know what these guys in the minor leagues can do. Right. Ellie, like, Ellie's hit the ball 120 miles an hour yeah. and thrown the ball 100 miles an hour yeah. and runs faster than anybody yeah. in major league history. Yes. This guy, he's put his skills yeah. against major league pitching. And the Reds also hired a private uh, a private hitting coach to work with him in the entire offseason. They're committed to seeing this guy, make yes. sure this guy yes. maybe not reaches his potential because nobody's going to reach that potential. He'd be the best player ever. Well, he's, a, he's, he's about to be. You heard it here first. I, th- there's a – here's – if he only becomes 50% of his – you know, they, they, they talk about, about scouting. What's his 75th percent uh, uh, projectile uh, ceiling? What's 95th percentile? If he hits his 50th percentile, he's a he's – he's a – MVP and an All Star. Right, but my, my point is, we know what these guys. Right. These guys have right. proven they can right. perform at a major league level. Right. We don't know what these guys in the minor leagues can. They're blocked. Right. They're all well, like the all of these feel like all so these. So that's why. That's why they get their blocked. So that's why if you trade them, right. to get a piece that you need to hopefully potentially win a World Series Today, tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. To now. Right. And the thing is, not only the guys in AAA, we still got guys in Double A, we still got guys in Single A, we right. still got we still got people. You know, they're, they they just signed one of the highest uh, uh, international free agents. I can't remember the guy's name. Is another uh, I think he's an infielder, but an international free agent. Oh, Santa Claus! Yeah, yeah. I know that guy. That's, that's my best friend. He's he's yeah. been in my house many many times. I didn't invite him. That's my security. I'm really concerned. Um, but I mean, yeah, the Reds just uh, Reds have a. Uh, 17-year-old catcher Alfredo Duno. They've got. Uh, they just signed one of the highest uh, international free agents. Are about to sign him when that when that period opens. Right. They've got the number two draft. Like, it, like even if they trade these guys, they've got plenty of guys to back. Like, there's depth upon depth to right. build off of. And, and people are worried about them trading, like Carlos Jorge. Worried about trading uh, trading Sammy Stafaro or Ricardo Cabrera. Any of these guys, uh, Edwin or uh, uh, Christian Arroyo, like they're blocked by. Guys in the majors that just debuted last year, right. they don't get a chance unless these guys fall on their face, mm-hmm. or six years later when they decide, you know, right. when, when they might hit free agency. Right? Why? Why do we hold on to these guys? Yeah, not everyone's going to pan out. Uh, yeah, you're, you're going to take a chance of potentially trading, you know, an all-time player, but that's the chance you take. Right. You, you know, that's the reason you draft. That's the reason right. you got these guys, not to give away the best players. Right. But to have these pieces to add to your major league team. Right. So that's why, and like I said, I fall into the same thing. Like, oh, I really don't want to get rid of this guy. I really don't want to get, but you don't know what he can do. Right. In 1990, the Red Sox needed a right-handed reliever. They traded Larry Anderson for Jeff Bagwell. Who? Never heard of that guy. Exactly. Um, Like, that's going to happen. Yeah, that's going to happen. Take your shot. Like, we've been waiting. We've been holding off. Next year, next year, next year. We don't want, like, they're building something. Fuck building for something, you got an opportunity. Right. Central is still not. Yeah, the thing. Cardinals. The Cardinals are the Cardinals. They've got a great organization. The treaty birds. Do what they can to win. Uh, uh, treaty birds. Oh. Right. The the, the yeah the, the the whiny little whiny little birds. Yeah. Those guys. Um, but they've got like they had a down year. They signed three starting pitchers. They're looking for another starting <laughs> yeah, pitcher. Three junk. Well, one, well, two junk two, pitchers. Two guys, but they raised the floor. Yeah. Like th- with. Uh, yeah. So the Santa is not a junk pitcher. I'm not calling right. him. Right. With Gibson and Lance Lynn, they raised the floor. Yeah. So guys that they had, they were pitching, here. right? Guys that are pitching like as, as great as Adam Wainwright in his career, and, and I can say that because he was awful against the Reds in his entire career. Reds beat the shit out of him, and that's awesome. The guy was a great pitcher, and the Reds just absolutely used, abused him like a batting tee. I felt very um, bad for him. Right, exactly. No, um, actually, actually, I didn't mind him. It was Chris uh, uh, Chris Carpenter. Carver, He's like, how Chris, am I going to explain uh, this to my kids? I hate that guy. Hate him. Right. Um, but Cardinals have his high, have a higher rated farm system, and they've got an organization that will go in and win. They've traded for Aaron mm-hmm. They've traded for Goldsmith. Why are we going like, to keep building for yeah. maybe tomorrow, tomorrow, but that, tomorrow? But that's the thing. Is, I like what, they, what the Reds have done yeah. so oh, far. Yeah, I, so I, I'm, I'm happy. That's why with, with, with people keep freaking out about, about the, the guy we just signed, that's where I'm like, I really think there's a trade in the works. Yeah. And even if not, guys are going to take days off. You, you move guys to like, give them a day and like, have him play in the field five days a week, right. one day at DH, one day taking a break. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to stay fresh. Injuries are going to happen because injuries yeah. are fluke and whatever, but guys aren't going to be worn down come 100-degree days of July and August because they're going to get a nice rotation. So even if they don't trade anybody, even and, if they keep Indy and all these guys. And for me, the big thing, too, is with the, the young pitchers that we have, I think they need a veteran starter pitcher, starting pitcher to 
show them the ropes of what it takes to make your start every fifth day because we haven't we, these guys haven't been able to yeah you know well, and, and yeah and that's kind of what Johnny Cueto did to, to, uh, back in 2012 with, with some of the pitchers yeah. there he, he was one that he ran the steps did all that stuff yada 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 I would, I would be cool if the Reds brought because he's a free agent this year I'd be cool if the Reds brought him back as just a veteran guy because you need innings hmm this, I mean, guys just don't pitch it. First off, guys aren't going seven, eight innings, which is fun. Guys are throwing 100% from pitch one to pitch 100. They're out of the game by the fifth inning. I get it. That's how the game is. I'm cool with that. You need a bunch of guys to throw innings. Reds, again, I rattled off a third of the names of, of terrible pitchers the Reds called up and threw in, you know, and, and had throw innings. Luis Sesa, not a terrible pitcher. 21 starts of Luke Weaver and his seven <laughs> ERA. Dream Weaver. Right. Thank you, Gary Wright. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I mean, even if it's a guy like Johnny Cueto, who you know isn't going to p- make 30 starts for your yeah. team and pitch 180 innings, just someone it's who's... It's the leadership, showing what, what, right. the ropes, what you Someone who's going to be there, who's going to be able to make starts, and someone who's going to be able to, if not be a vocal leader, be a Scott Rowland type. Listen, this is like this is my regimen. This is my off day. Yeah. This is what I do. That was our this biggest problem last year. I mean, Hunter Green got hurt. Lolo got hurt. Ashcraft yeah. got hurt. The only thing that hurt... I've been worn, da- worn down because, worn he, out. because he just he didn't, never pitched that many Right, games. yeah. So, I mean, but everybody, everybody was injured. That was one of the biggest problems. If we had these guys healthy last year, we probably would have made the playoffs. Yeah. Um, according to Siri, 153 hours. Uh, it was a podcast record by a Dutch team of the Netherlands. Thank you, Brad M. 153 hours is, let's see, that's five, oh, six... That's almost an entire week. All right. On that note, we're probably going to be in this soon. That, that, that's, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we're not rolling until next Friday morning, I think, would probably be about what it would yeah. be. Actually, we need, we need Joey. Where did Joey Cargo? We can, we can do this, uh, this giveaway here. I don't, he, he disappeared on us. Joey! Been left without any sort of parental I, I, supervision. I know. I'm not sure. Anyway, well, we can keep talking until he shows back up. If you guys see Joey Carr, tell him we want to do the, the giveaway now. He's got sweet. the man bun. Yeah, the man, the, mun. the man bun. The man There needs to be a short name. The Mun? The Mun? I don't know. Well, so, all right. This is a question I got for you. Is, all right, so everybody calls it the mullet now. Right. Back in the day, I, we just called it long hair. We never called it the mullet. I mean, the mullet and long hair, like what they call a mullet. Like, um, you know, Chad Kruger from uh, Nickelback, right? Yeah. He just had kind of long, stringy, awful looking hair. They call they, they say that a mullet. That's, that's not a mullet. A mullet is a, is a regular, normal haircut on top, and, and then, like, the longer yeah. on back. That's a yeah. mullet. It's, like, it's, like, shaved here. And have then you seen that's come back in the last couple of years? Oh, it has. It, it, it looks terrible. <laughs> like, watching, um, so my daughter is, she's in third grade, like, she, she cheerleads. Um, so, you know, but, but, you know, we go to these uh, football, peewee football games and everything, and these kids, that you know, first, second, third grade, they have legitimate mullets. <laughs> and I'm like. I see high school kids have that. That was not something you wanted. Like, for some dude in the nineties, it's, it's, it's not gonna look nineties. That was cool. Bobby Ray Cyrus, that looked cool. It, back then, we thought it did. A perm mullet, a perm mullet. Well, people, guys used to perm their hair back in the seventies, so. But that doesn't mean it looked good. But they thought so it that's did. That's why we have we have the benefit of afterthought. We have the benefit of looking right. well, at uh, video, look, of look looking at, at and like that looks awful. If you if you look at half of the uh, the styles in the seventies. Do you think that stuff look good? No. No, never mind. There's, There's a reason most of those aren't going back. There's not a lot of people begging to look like Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah. There's some, but so not how a lot do you, of people uh, How do you want to do this? Uh, this... <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm ready I'm ready when you are, man. However you, however you want to do this. All righty. <laughs> so we're not. We're not. Okay. okay. All right. Wheel, wheel of names is spinning, apparently. Wheel. Of names, go. <laughs> we went to play it. So who's past agent? I, that would make me Vanna White. You're Vanna White. Your show. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so, I don't have the legs. So when, when we did that, I, I, I immediately went to Spaceballs. <laughs> We've gone to play it. We all. <laughs> every show we always do some. Always go to Spaceballs. I could talk. I mean, not even just just any Mel Brooks. I would talk Mel Brooks seven. <laughs> All right, we got a winner, and it is Cassidy Karanovich. I said that right, I think. Cassidy, that, that sounded, you sounded what he, what he said. Cassidy so it, Karanovich. If it's wrong, it's Joey. There he is. He showed up. So he, she, he will, uh, ZTV will be emailing you in five minutes. Is that what you said? Five. Five minutes. He'll be showing up. What's that? That's that guy. 
Oh. Tell you what, we'll host the show from we'll host the show from his bar. That's what Always we'll do. Open. <laughs> I like it. Come here, nice. come here. You gotta show. Come here, Rob. Come here. You gotta show me this. Come here. You gotta show the people. Yeah, yeah, you show the people. Come here. Come here. I, I, I like this jersey. This, this is Rob. This is my idea here. This is, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Seen anywhere else? I was first. Yeah, so, Rob, exactly. Rob jumped. All right, so turn around. You, you gotta show me this right jersey. Here. Yeah, right, right there. there. Always open, baby. <laughs> that, like guy's, that guy's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Number, like it. number one's pretty good. Uno. Yeah. Uno. You guys need one? Yeah, I take one. Jackpot, Joey. Always, always, always. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm on my second double. So I appreciate that. All right, guys. So we will be. I'll be doing a giveaway here at the bar. And uh, we'll be giving away this uh, Jack by Joey flag. So I'll be doing that live here. We got um, also a Jack by Joey skull cap that I'll be giving away. So do not good. hit Santa's lantern. His lantern is what I, I. It's got a gangster lean to it. Do not disrespect. It's got, it's got a little, little gangster lean to it. Have you ever heard of like Krampus and the weird like the, the German like stuff where they've got like an angry like a mean Santa Claus? No, it's because I hit his lamp. Right. He comes to steal shit, or, or, or there's Krampus and I'm sorry. stuff like that. Like they're. I apologize. You know, Santa, I apologize. Yes. Yeah. That better. It's. I mean, it's the time of the year. He's watching. <laughs> I know as hell. I, I know sure shit. You are not not. You are not nice. <laughs> All right. On that note, I think we're gonna roll on out of here. Joe, tell everybody where they can follow you at, the riverfront, what you guys got going on, all that cool stuff. So you guys can find us at uh, youtube.com slash riverfrontcincy. We've got uh, Late Night Reds with Tim and usually Ben Brown. Occasionally you'll see this ugly mug on here as a guest because I like talking and I bug everybody to be on Yes, he show. does. He's very annoying. No, no, he's a great guy. It's, again, it keeps my wife from having to hear me talk. She's sports. ignoring you again. She has, we've been together for 20, almost 24 years, so she's got a lot of practice ignoring She does the same thing my wife does. Um, See, my, my wife's, actually, my wife's I, watching the show. Yeah, I, I am the oh, host. I'm, I'm the host of uh, the, uh, the Bengals show on, uh, uh, produced by the Riverfront. Uh, me and Greg Neiman, every week we'd, uh, pre uh, we'd go over the, the, weeks, uh, the game week before, preview the upcoming opponents, uh, and then we've got the OG, the longest-running Reds podcast in the world. In the world. The Riverfront, the Red Show. Used to be Red Lake Nation. Uh, Chad Dotson, Nate Dotson, uh, cast of characters. Thank you, sir. They do a fantastic job. They've been like, they are, I, everything that I do, me being hooked up with you, is all because they gave me a chance. Watch us, like us, subscribe us. Uh, again, riverfrontcincy.com. We, we have a lot of, uh, got a lot of college basketball coverage going on right now if you go to our website as well. So. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun. Make sure you guys stay tuned to ZTV, Sports Strawberry Eyes. We got some pretty cool stuff coming up here uh, very, very shortly. And uh, Joey, Joey, you ready to end this thing? All right, guys. On that note, make sure you like, subscribe, share. Go Bearcats. They're going to win. And other than that, that's your sports, baby. See ya.